Hey, what's up guys? Tookie here, back again, finally, with another episode of my Seattle Sonics NBA 2K19, my league. I hate the title, but regardless, welcome back. It is time for another season with the reborn Seattle Sonics. A last episode was capped off, maybe by me, perhaps being just a tad bit too... Uh, just a tad bit too conservative with the money that we're spending, but regardless, we are still set up to be relatively competitive, and we will hopefully be back in the playoffs in consecutive seasons. Darrell Arnold, Irvin Mohanan, and Lefteris Dorikas leading the way. The big thing this year, whether or not we see A.J. Marsh develop into a true starter, and who takes over. I guess really the continued development of guys like McKinney, Guys like Davidson, whose season last year was slightly derailed due to injury. Jackie Nash joining this squad. And, of course, someone like Wesley and Hopkins. The squad overall is okay. I mean, there's no doubt that having Cameron Black still at forward would be extremely helpful. But my approach was better safe than sorry, for better or worse. Again, we made the playoffs last year. Things were looking pretty good. Now the question is whether or not we can have a repeat performance now as far as like anything preseason power rankings wise. I mean, you know, uh, mixed, mixed results apparently. But we'll see just how good this team is. We're not going to waste too much time. We are going to get right down to business. Injuries, a big, oh my god. <laughs> Injuries, a big factor last year and how that season went down. We'll see whether or not we are heavily affected this year. And, of course, the wind knocked out of you every time you see that prompt. So far, so good. So we do lose our second game of the season, and there it is. Murray Hopkins for two to four weeks. And that is a bit of a rough injury, I have to admit. That drastically changes what we're looking like. Uh, the big question here, I don't exactly want to run an 11-man bench to try and get everybody some minutes, but I want to see what it looks like at least. Just to see. You know what? I know that's overkill, right? I do. I know it's overkill. However, I'm going to do it, and we're going to see whether or not we're still finding success. So, I mean, we're 5-3. Uh, we're and three. I wish we were 6-3. and three. We're 5-3 and three on the season. We suffer our first big injury with Murray Hop. Oh, my Christ. Okay, here we go. Richie Davidson, who is proving to be a tad bit injury prone, a broken left thigh. That's oddly unspecific. Like, the, uh, like was it the bone, I guess? In which case, it wouldn't be called the thigh. The thigh bone's connected to the knee bone, apparently. Richie Davidson's hurt, and there goes the, uh, there goes the question of whether or not an 11-man bench is needed. We'll drop it back down to 10. And already, our depth is being tested, which is not really all that surprising. Hopkins and Davidson both injured. It does get Arnold and Bohannon's minutes up. McDaniels and Marsh, and of course, Dorikas right now just a little bit fatigued. We did end up beating Detroit, so for those who lost that result, like I did, uh, in the aftermath of the injury, lose to Golden State, rebound with a pretty big win over Denver, and right now we're struggling to get that decent run of form. Back-to-back -back wins for the first time in a bit. Make it three straight before losing to Utah. We have a couple games left through the month of November. Let's see how this goes. Murray Hopkins is back, which is a welcome change because, I mean, you know, we're, we're hurting a little bit in terms of depth on that front. So it is, it is pretty nice. I'm going to bump that up to 11. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Again, I, I want to make sure, like, Jackie Nash, even someone like Kato, it's really Sparks who doesn't really need the minutes. But I'm trying to at least let everybody have a little bit of playing time as it is. Dorikas goes down day to day, which I can't say is all that surprising due to the fact that he was kind of flirting with disaster anyway with how often he had been playing. Uh, Davidson looking like he's getting ready to come back as well. The good thing is we do have Murray Hopkins, who can at least do a decent job of standing in as the starting center, but obviously it hurts this team significantly, and we have lost three straight games. Not ideal by any stretch of the imagination. 11-9 and 9 
on the season. And I am uh, I'm a little bit afraid of how this has gone thus far. But Dorikas is back in the lineup. And we'll see how it goes from here. Hopefully we can start to pick up some wins. The team chemistry is still looking okay. Not amazing, but all right. And we do end up beating Chicago. So 12-9 and nine through the opening month or so of the season. Currently five and a half games back of the Spurs, but we are finding ourselves in a playoff spot right now. Still a long, long way to go, however. I think we'll continue onward. Not too much to check out right now, I would say, due to the injuries. But we'll maybe take a look at the tactics and change things up if need be. As we continue onward, we end up beating Dallas. We lose to Memphis. Get a nice uh, victory against the Lakers, who I still can't believe beat us in the playoffs last year, as devastating as that was. Back-to-back -back losses to the Thunder and Bulls. Not sure why Chicago gave us that much trouble. I mean, we beat them by 10 to end November, but hey, I'll take it. Still winning more games than we're losing, which is a decent formula, although right now we're back to just two games over. And Richie Davidson is healthy. Way to go, Richie. Let's, uh, let's bump up the bench a little bit. It's uh, relying on Hopkins to balance out with Dorikas, which might not be the worst way to go. And then someone like Jackie Nash is getting four minutes. <laughs> Poor Jackie. Poor Jackie. You know what? We need to uh, we need to change that. I think it's going to be Jackie and Kato that end up having their time dropped. Uh, th yeah, three points a game right now. Uh, Six point one player efficiency, and then Kato. Kato's actually doing pretty well. Career stats per 60, averaging 17. That's not bad. It's certainly better than Sparks. Sparks is a little bit more defensive. Hmm. You know, in fairness, I think I'm just going to leave it like that, and hopefully it can kind of cut down on some of the injuries we're suffering because players won't be on the court as much. But if it starts affecting, you know, if it really starts to affect how many wins we're picking up, and it doesn't matter anyway because Marsh gets hurt. <laughs> It's a minor injury, thankfully, but an injury nonetheless as the minutes just drastically changed. Drastically changed, but that's due to how many players are doing well. It actually puts Hopkins as a starting center and Dorikas a power forward, which isn't the worst idea in the world. Not the worst idea I've ever heard of. Let's see if we can get back to our winning ways here against the Clippers. That is not the case. Now 18 and 16 on the season. We do crush the Sharks and the Suns, and we'll try to get to January 1st, as A.J. Marsh is back, so we are going to have to make that change. And so let's see right now, so Sparks and Wesley both strongly underperforming. I think we're going to drop the bench down to 10. We're going to drop the amount of minutes there, and we're going to go... Five and eight, even though technically position wise that might cause some trouble. But we should be okay. And we'll see how that goes, hopefully, for the next three games or so. We'll actually go beyond January 1st. We end up beating Memphis, and then Bohannon picks up a minor injury. So it's not enough to take him out of the lineup, which is pretty nice. Kato's actually performing at a pretty high level. Not enough to take him out of the lineup. But still not the guy you want to see getting hurt. 21-17. Can we win our first game of the new year? January 2027, we do end up beating the Aces. And Bohannon is back to 100%. So I think now is enough time where we can really kind of judge who's actually deserving of the time. And we'll see who's actually been efficient uh, in the time that they have been given. Now, player, uh, people have asked about player mentorship, which I'm not totally against. Not the worst thing in the world right now. I mean, it's tough. Technically, we have Davidson training under Arnold. Which, uh, not the worst way to go. Actually, in fairness, is that the, that's the inverse. Or that's what can be done. I completely forget with this. Yeah, it's the mentee on the right. I don't know if Davidson... I think that's just the option? I'm not sure, man. But anyway, I mean, we can do this. People have asked about it. It would just be a matter of uh, who's training up who, right? 
especially too with the whole center and power forward options. Uh, there's really not a whole hell of a lot that could be done. Like we can have Derekus trying to uh, train up Murray Hopkins a little bit better. Let me know what you think in terms of uh, in terms of training anybody up. Let me know what you think. The team's not going to change too much, and we can get on that. Although, although I mean, Bohannon. Yeah, now in fairness, it's mentorship, the mentor. I mean, we can have... I've set this up before, but it's still such a weird menu. Now again, we could have Davidson training under Arnold. That's it's not a big deal, but at this point, it's like, would uh, would Jackie Nash be the better way to go? Of course, because you could only have one person associated with one. I'll leave it up to you guys. What do you think, as far as player mentorship is concerned? Right now, I'm more concerned about the standings. We're a game and a half back of Utah in the division. Conference-wise, we're a bit further back, but still in the playoff structure. We would currently be the eighth seed, but we have a game and a half up on the Clippers. So it could be worse. 11th according to NBA.com. 2K has us lower at 18th. So we're, we're doing all right. But we'll take a look at the game plan here and see what we want to do. The main question, someone like Jackie Nash. How has he been doing this year? Uh, and I care more about the per 60 stats, of course. So on pace for just under 7 points a game. The rebounds and assists aren't bad. In terms of advanced stats, eh, the efficiency's pretty good, actually. I mean, finding it hard-pressed to say that Jackie Nash doesn't deserve, uh, doesn't deserve just a tad bit more time. Richie Davidson, on the other hand, uh, well, you know, can't uh, can't argue with how he's done as well. The efficiency rating at a 13.4, a 4.9 overall. A little bit better than Jackie Nash. Wesley needs time regardless just because of our lack of options. Sparks is the interesting one where, yeah, probably doesn't need as much time. 429 true shooting percentage. Arnold's at a 623 in comparison. So, I mean, but Davidson better shooting. I mean, to be honest, it's probably... I mean, it probably is guys like Sparks and Nash that could take a seat. Hopkins and then Kato's moved up to the sixth option. Kato's been pretty damn good. 12.9, 528 shooting. McDaniels... At a 10, 514. Hopkins, of course, needs to play regardless. Yeah, I think I think it's it's Sparks and Nash that uh, have to take a seat more than anybody else, really, uh, just to make the most of what we're doing here. So we'll drop his minutes down, replace him with Davidson. Cato's still getting a decent amount of time. Right now, it has McDaniel's in the sixth spot, which. I think I'm okay with. How's McKinney done? 12.0, a 6.10. Oof, McKinney's actually doing pretty damn well. And the McDaniels is at a 10. You know, I can't necessarily disagree with that. The only thing I could disagree with is, uh, of course, Hopkins only getting 16 minutes. Now, Hopkins is actually doing all right. I think, you know, we're going to drop that down. I still want Murray Hopkins to be the sixth man. And overall, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy. With that, uh, with that time, and I gotta be honest here, actually, I want McKinney to be over 30 minutes a night. He's looking pretty good. So unfortunately, uh, it is gonna be Sparks and Nash that are the odd man, you know, that are the odd man out for now. I think for the most part we're looking okay though. I'm still good with the coaching strats overall. Arnold Bohan and Derikas play through star, shoot at will. I still think that pretty much fits the team. Offensive tempo-wise, I think, yeah, just fast team. Go for it. I mean, it's not a bad way to not a bad way to do it. And then again, Arnold this year. I mean, player efficiency rating at a 24, true shooting at a 623. So I mean I'm not I'm not complaining. He's outperforming last year's pace, which is outrageous. And Bohannon as well is doing better than he was last year, too. So I'm not complaining about our stars. Derikas is struggling a little bit more this year. He did miss time due to injury. Uh, Marsh is about the same. 
It makes me wonder though with McKinney. That's six ten percentage. This might be might be a bit too much too soon, but man, what if we just put faith in McKinney to go for it? So that was kind of my hope, right? Especially when we got rid of black and wanted to save a little bit of money that someone like Sean McKinney would take a step up. And if we look to at the attributes, I mean, I know he's 24, there's the 80 potential. He's a decent option. We'll see how we do over the next few weeks here and then take it from there. I mean, it's been an up and down season thus far, but we're still looking pretty good. And then Julio Cato immediately gets injured and a loss which is not ideal. Murray Hopkins also gets hurt. That's not ideal. So we'll completely rebuild the rotation. And that gets Nash back in. And Sparks, for that matter. Well, that just managed to completely undo everything that I set up. Which is fine, because at least we know the two guys that are going to be sitting, for the most part, when we readjust the lineup. But... That's always fun. Take time to make those lineup changes. Uh, Darrell ends up getting a bit banged up as well. Um, right now it's saying he's good to play, which is surprising. And we'll see. Now, we don't play for a few days until we end up going up against OKC, so we should have a chance. It's our only game of the week, actually. Hopefully Darrell doesn't get uh, re-injured. He does not. And he is back to 100%, so we'll auto-adjust that and uh, let it be. McKinney down to the sixth man, so you know what I think. We'll go back over here, set that to Dorikas yet again, and be good to go. Now, we have quietly won three games in a row, and four out of our last five. 26 and 19 on the season, team came up over an 80. So we're looking good. Hopefully we can keep this up. It's weird. We're in such a, an interesting spot where the regular season now is almost an afterthought. It's like, okay, we should be making the playoffs. It's not debatable. And now it's just I want to get to the playoffs and I want to win a goddamn game. Last year was such a punch in the gut to this squad. The team is so much better than what they did last year in the playoffs. As our winning streak comes to an end, but we pick it right back up. Some high-scoring games here. Kato is back from injury, which means, uh, again, Davidson, uh, actually Davidson, yeah, Davidson we wanted in, it was Jackie Nash, so I mean Sparks is playing well, but I hate to tell you, buddy, uh, Davidson's on the come up, 13-6 and a 5-43, uh, we're going to switch those two around, Kato will get just a little bit more time. Murray's still playing with a slight injury, and i got to be honest, that concerns me quite a bit. But thankfully, the wins keep coming. We're now 10 games over 500, make that 11. 31 and 20 on the season, a week out from the All-Star game, and we beat Milwaukee as well. So things are looking up. Murray's back to 100%, which I am quite happy about. And again, we will drop Sparks, bump up Cato again, and bump up Davidson. And we'll see what else we got going on here. Two games left. We play Oklahoma. Well, in fairness, the all-star selection, I should say, is on its way up as we end up beating OK or losing to OKC by two and beating Atlanta. It was the uh, the team captains. Do you wish to stop? I do not. We'll see who ended up making the all-star game. As Jesse McDaniels picks up an injury, hairline fracture in the the left arm. The whole thing, apparently, uh, out for four to six weeks. So that's that's a pretty rough loss but it could be worse that does end up getting Davidson some minutes and I'm actually going to go to an 11 man bench for now and we'll readjust I mean obviously the team right now is more tired than anything just because they you know, just got done with the game but still we'll take it from there 5 games left before All Star Weekend we're at 34 and 21 after that win over the T-Wolves we play the Wizards, the T-Wolves again, deadline day can go through, we are fine. Denver and Philadelphia, we end up losing to Washington, pretty rough loss. We end up losing to Minnesota, can we please beat Denver? I don't know if we, no we didn't, wow, so three straight losses and A.J. Marsh breaks his nose, he'll be out for four to six weeks, so we're on a losing streak and we lose Marsh to a broken nose. Now it's looking like it's going to be an injury he can play through. We desperately need to beat Philadelphia 
to head into the All-Star break on a strong note, and thankfully we do snap that three-game losing streak. So as of the All-Star game, we are currently the second-best team in the Northwest Division, a game and a half behind Utah, with four games worth of separation on Mil uh, not on freaking Milwaukee, on Portland. What the hell am I talking about? Which is fine. I had Milwaukee on the mind since we played them somewhat recently. And then, of course, Minnesota's a bit further back. Conference-wise, we are currently in sixth. Not too bad. Right now, Dallas and San Antonio up there. We're 11 games back. Not too far behind the Aces, uh, Utah, and Golden State. And power rankings-wise, for the hell of it, seventh. 2K has us 12th. Mark Spears with us in seventh. Not too shabby. What's what's the team looking like at this point? League leader. So Darrell Arnold right now is leading the league in points per game. <laughs> Nearly three points more than Nelson Fletcher of the Thunder. So, I mean, my God, if we don't have an MVP candidate on our hands right now, I don't know how the hell we could. Bohannon is seventh in scoring. Uh, offensive rebounds per game is Foster. Defensive... Uh, rebounds per game in general. Adrian Park of the Seals. Assist per game. Nobody up there. Vladimir Jeremic is up there for the Steel uh, for the Seals. And then Steals is Valencia. Arnold's uh, right now tied in that regard. And blocks per game. Apparently a two is leading the way. Interesting. So let's take a look. And we'll see. If the all tar if the all tar if the all star teams have been selected and they have Darrell Arnold is actually captain. It's team Darrell against team Giannis. So if that doesn't sum up that we have a superstar on our hands, I don't know what does. The big thing that stands out to me is on team Darrell, Cameron Black has made an all star game for the first time. Yikes. We'll have to see what he's looking like. Not to mention though. On the other side, Team Giannis, Irvin Bohannon is now a two-time All-Star, and Lefteris Derikis makes an All-Star game as well. But we get rid of Cameron Black, and he makes an All-Star game. That is a devastating, absolutely devastating turn of events. Like, there's no other way to put it. To trade away Cameron Black, thinking he makes too much money and he might not necessarily be worth it, to have him then make an all-star game and basically throw it right back at my face. That is not ideal by any stretch of the imagination. Now, we traded him to the Cavs, did we not? I believe that was the jersey that he was wearing. Indy, oh my god. If you want to look at a mistake for this series, this might have been it. Cameron Black has turned into a different goddamn player. He has turned into a different player since he has left. A look at the jump in the numbers. I don't know if it's because he's the main man on offense there or what. We know he wasn't an amazing offensive guy. That is insane. He went from just under 10 points a game. He's averaging 16 for Cleveland, the rebounds are the same. The assists are up a little bit. The steals are up. The shooting percentage, I imagine, just in general, is up. That is insane. Cameron Black, the second he leaves Seattle, finds his scoring touch. I mean, the efficiency ratings are up. The true shooting percentage is up. That... That is brutal. I mean, you look at the skill graph and everything, right? I mean, the offense isn't exactly there. I mean, he's no doubt a defensive specialist. But it's just, what the hell happened? And again, um, uh, you know, I know, we made a mistake. We could have held on to him. We could have held on to him more than likely and been fine money-wise. I was uh, just a little bit, a little bit too reserved money-wise because I know we have some big contracts coming up. But that is... That is insane that Cameron Black is doing that well. Absolutely crazy. But at the very least, we do have ourselves some all-stars. The team itself, again, is something we'll take a look at. I wanted to look at the league leaders and to see uh, how well they've done overall. 
Arnold right now, though, we know leading the way. Bohannon doing well. Derikis at just under 16 points a game, averaging 10 rebounds a game. And actually, I want to double check here because, again, with Darrell Arnold, I mean, you look last year, his numbers are up, the rebounds are slightly down, but the assists are up, the steals are up. And in terms of, uh, I mean, you know, just the per 60, he's having a better season than he did last year, which is outrageous because he was MVP caliber last year. Darrell Arnold is the real goddamn deal at 27 years old. Irvin Bohannon as well. The numbers are up. I mean, the efficiency ratings are up. The shooting percentage is up. I mean, these two are t absolutely carrying the team. Dorikas, I mean, unfortunately, again, offensively, it's dropped a bit. He's still pretty damn good. I'm not really complaining all that much. And he's still having a decent season. AJ Marsh, of course, injuries have been a little bit of a factor, but for him, of course, he's getting more playing time. So, of course, the scoring's up. Of course, the rebounds per game are up. Although, technically, the per 60 numbers are a little bit weaker this year in terms of total points than what he had last year. So, his. Uh, you know, his player efficiency rating is down, but his in general efficiency is up, and actually the true shooting is the same, so it's a little bit interesting there. Sean McKinney, I mean, it's his first real season here, but a 629 true shooting percentage. He's turning into a very good player for us. Very good indeed. Now, McDaniels currently hurts. He's underperformed this year in terms of an offensive standpoint. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the only reason I traded Black was I thought, okay, maybe McDaniels fits into the system a little bit better. Maybe he can perform a little bit better. He hasn't lived up to the hype. Murray Hopkins has missed time due to injury. And again, the points are down a little bit. The rebounds are down a little bit. And in general, the efficiency numbers are down. So right now, McDaniels and Hopkins, very disappointing for us. Cato, I mean, not making the most of the extra scoring, which is unfortunate. Technically, though, the efficiency ratings and the true shooting are higher this year now that he's getting more time. Davidson's missed time due to injury. Uh, and his numbers are fairly similar. Technically, the efficiency ratings are a little bit lower than you'd want them to be. Byron Wesley, not too bad. Not too bad. Technically more efficient. The true shooting is down, but not too bad overall. And then Sparks, not too bad, all things considered, right? I don't think we expect anything great out of him, although he has turned around the true shooting. It was, it was off to a very bad start. And then Jackie Nash... His rookie year, he's he's doing okay. The shooting percentage is brutal. Uh, but he is a defensive first player. So it's uh, interesting. And, of course, Will Torres and Ethan Baker down in the G League. Overall, we're on a pretty good pace. I'd like to think we're going to be playoff bound. We have two, stu uh, two superstars, two stupidly good players in Bohannon and Arnold. Right now we're in a playoff spot, 35 and 24, but I think overall I have to end this episode on a bit of a low note because Cameron Black is an all-star. <laughs> we get rid of Cameron Black and he's an all-star. Apparently, AC Galloway is on pace to be MVP over Durrell. Are you shitting me? It could only be because of the rebounds. That's it. That's outrageous. Rookie of the year right now, we don't have anybody up there, of course. Sixth man of the year. We don't have anybody up there. Defensive player of the year, nobody up there. Most improved, nobody up there. But we have two MVP candidates in Darrell Arnold and Irvin Bohannon. And damn it, I really don't want another year of us wasting them. We'll see what happens in the next episode. We finish up the regular season and potentially, I mean, hell, first round of the playoffs as well. Very much a possibility. Let me know what I should be keeping an eye out on as far as the game plan. Of course, heading into the playoffs, I'll shorten up the bench as well. I think I can go into about eight players. Let me know what you think about the idea of player mentorship and everything else in between. And hopefully, if we do get into the playoffs in the next episode, it goes just a tad bit better than how it went this past year.